and then I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Okay, is everyone able to see the slide? Yes. Okay, perfect. Well, I'm Erin Christensen. Welcome to our accounting boot camp. Um, I manage employer relations for the Block Career Center, and this is the second time. I'll let Maggie introduce herself here in a minute, but this is the second time we've done this. First time virtual, so thank you for being here. But um, we found accounting. The accounting timeline is a very rigid timeline, and it starts fairly early, especially for public accounting. So we thought that trying to get a little bit ahead of the game and starting a little bit before school starts and then um, in doing this again in January is helpful to our students, especially those who transfer in and didn't have this knowledge before coming to UMKC. So I work in the Block Career Center. I don't work as directly with students. I work more with companies. Um, and we also will have CBiz here talking about um, their perspective and, and what they look for during their recruiting process as well. But Maggie, would you like to go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, hi everyone, I'm Maggie Rayland. So like Erin said, she handles the employer relations side of the house in our career center. And then I am the person that will be your first point of contact for coaching, programming, um, you know, if you need a resume put together, if you wanna practice those interview skills, you know, all the way up through, okay, you have a few offers, let's talk about negotiating that salary. Um, I will be your point of contact for all of those things. Um, I'm also happy to meet with each of you individually to determine your timeline. Um, we'll talk a lot about the recruiting timelines today, but um, it's, it's really specific for, especially if you want to if you're wanting to go into public accounting. And so I'll work really collaboratively with your academic advisors to make sure you're on the right path. You know, we'll figure out when you're graduating, when you'll be CPA eligible. Uh, you know, we'll find a time for you to take off, hopefully a spring semester for you to do an internship. So there's a, there's a lot of moving pieces, but I'm happy to sit down with each of you to make sure that you are on the right timeline and that you'll be successful in this journey. Yeah. Um... Yeah, and so I like I said, I work more with employers. So anytime we do a career fair, you're doing interviews on campus, um, panels, um, if there's an employer helping co present a workshop, um, things like that. Maggie and I work collaboratively a lot with those different types of events, but um, but so you won't see me as much when, when working with our office individually. Sometimes Maggie will pull me in if, if there's a specific question, but um, but I do more of the employer side of the house. Yeah. And I'll just say I have been working with accounting students for a long time. Um, prior to coming to UMKC, I worked for Mizzou's business school working with accounting students. Roxanne and I from CBIS go way back um, to my Mizzou days. And so um, I have a lot of knowledge and a lot of good advice to give you. So I hope you will all make individual appointments with me so we can get you started on the right foot. So Shelby, we, we also have a student here. Um, Shelby actually interned with CBIS and she's really involved with the Block School and she's gonna give her perspective um, about working with our office and finding her internship and just some, I think, peer-to-peer -peer advice before we jump into the different um, types of accounting that you can go into. So Shelby, I'll hand it over to you. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so my name is Shelby Deaton. Um, I am finishing up my undergrad this December and I'm doing two master's classes. Um, and I thought it might be helpful if I just talk about the timeline of how I did things. Um, that way you kind of get a kind of a story perspective on how you guys should be doing it as well. Um, so in the fall of 2020, I went to the accounting career fair and I met Roxanne and Casey. Um, I talked with not only CBIS, but I talked with a lot of other different firms too. Um, and we talked about who their clients are. We talked if, about if those clients are larger, if they're smaller, if they're midsize. Um, we also talked about um, the workload with interns, like what we should expect during a busy season, not only as interns, but when we do start as full-time staff. Um, and we also talked about why I would be a good fit for the firm and um, what qualities I had that CBIS was looking for as well. 
Um, and then in fall of 2020, I met Casey again, and I told her, I was a sophomore at the time, I said I wasn't really looking for an internship. Hey, Shelby. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. You said fall of 2020, but was it fall oh, of 2019? It was fall of 2018. I'm so 2018. sorry. Okay, I just wanted to make sure they, it was, yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Sorry. Thank you so much for correcting yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> so it was fall of 2018, so about two years ago, guys. Um, and then in fall of 2018, I met Casey again, they were tabling at UMKC and I told her I wasn't really interested in looking for an internship that spring of 2019, just because I was a sophomore at the time, but I really wanted to get my foot in the door. Um, so Casey introduced me to this administrative internship which was a really great experience for me. Um, I got to know the partners. I got to know kind of the many facets of CBIZ and um, what opportunities were there for me. Um, and that led into an event called the Career Academy, which all the public accounting firms do. Um, and it's a summer leadership program, which is kind of a two or three day event typically um, where you just get to know the firm, you get to know other people who also want to join public accounting, who also are looking for an internship. And, and it's also a lead into an internship that following spring. So I did a summer leadership with CBiz and two other firms in summer of 2019. And that led to um, some offers for internships for spring of 2020. Um, I ended up getting an offer from CBiz and I accepted it. And I just got done with that internship in um, spring of 2020. Um, and some of the things that we did at that internship was you, CBIS lets you do auditing and tax internships, whereas a lot of other accounting firms make you choose audit or tax. So that was something that stood out for me. Um, and you just got a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with managers and senior staff, and you just got to know the culture of the firm really well. Um, and then once busy season was over, that led into Roxanne and I discussing a full-time offer. And I ended up getting a full-time offer that is going to begin in January of 2022. So that's kind of my experience. If you guys have any questions about kind of the path in total, it was about a two-year process of doing all of the events and stuff. And Aaron and Maggie were there every step of the way to kind of guide you because it is a lot to juggle. I'll hand it back to you, Erin, unless anybody has any questions. Yeah, Shelby, I think you... Go ahead, Maggie. Yeah, I think, Shelby, you touched on something um, really important was that you went to the fairs and you went to tabling um, and you really maximized your exposure to the firms, which I think is, is really important. And Erin can talk a little bit more about some of the events that she has planned um, for the fall. But yeah, I mean, you're going to see accounting firms and recruiters um, attending lots of different types of events. And it's just important to fully immerse yourself in that experience. Yeah, you want to you want to maximize your face time with those recruiters so that you do stand out and you can get a full time offer. For sure. Hey, Shelby, hey. I had a question. Yeah. Um, you said that they uh, at CBiz, they allowed you to do audit and tax at the same time. Uh, how can you speak a little bit more about that? And also, like, do you feel like uh, it was, do you feel like you got them both equally or like perhaps one you did a little bit less of and a little bit more of? So um, actually, I'm glad you asked about that question because they offer an audit and tax internship. Um, but I knew pretty early on that auditing was my, what I wanted to go into just because of the few tax jobs I did have. I enjoyed my auditing more. Um, so I worked with my managers. I worked with Roxanne and scheduling um, to say, okay, I really, I really want to focus on the audit side. Is there any way we can transform this internship into more of me doing auditing tasks? Um, and they were happy to help with that. And I think it allowed me to maximize what I was good at and get more face time with those auditing managers that I would be working with when I start full time. But then I also had some interns that did some auditing jobs and um, they were, they said that they are definitely more of a tax person. So their <laughs> internship kind of leaned more towards the tax side. So it is just really um, communicating well with your managers and Roxanne and scheduling to see what you're best fit for. So you can um, maximize what you're good at and help the firm out. Flexibility is good. Definitely. Flexibility and, and communication. And let me make a comment. This is Roxanne. Uh, 
I think students who are who are a part of this, you can you can somewhat see a theme. Shelby put in a lot of work and effort to get what she wanted to do, and she asked for things. and And at CBiz, we're really big on uh, having helping you find your passion. And if there's something that you really want to do, ask for it. And if you do well and seize the opportunity, you'll be successful. So, you know, sh uh, tip number one: put in the work because it's worth it. And you know, you, when you have that time, do that research that you need to do on companies and find that fit. Uh, I, I think that those are some key key elements or takeaways from Shelby's presentation. And I think something Shelby mentioned too is it totally depends, I think, on the firm as well. And Roxanne, Erin, you can speak to this. Some firms really do want you to pick. They want you, they're gonna put you in the audit pipeline or they're gonna put you in the tax pipeline. I think we've seen actually over the last few years, more firms are doing sort of a hybrid. Um, that used to not be the case. Um, I think even five years ago, it was really one or the other. <clears throat> and so you had to really pick and know yourself and know what you wanted to do. Um, but more firms are doing hybrids or if you get into one thing and you find that it's not a fit, you know, again, to Roxanne's point, asking to, to maybe pick up some experience in another area, more firms are, I think, willing and open to that. Mm -hmm. Hi, I have a question. Uh, I don't know who can address this question, but um, so everything changed after the coronavirus and COVID-19. And so my question is basically the accounting events and everything is going to be virtual. So how is that going to, how are we going to advance our careers if we can't like meet with somebody and all the career fairs are, aren't going to be stationed where they used to be. So we won't have that in-person handshake. Hi, how, how are you? Like, what's your name and stuff? Cause it just seems like everything is going to be on the computer or on zoom or in some type of method like this. But there's a lot to be said for, you know, it's kind of a different way of, of differentiating yourself. You know, I, I've done several of these events through Zoom and, and I, I'm, you know, at first I was a little apprehensive about it because I'm, you know, obviously I wouldn't be in the role I was in if I didn't like to connect with people, but, you know, particularly the one-on-one -on -one sessions and the interview sessions where they're, you know, where, where they're just, where there are video chats and conversations, take advantage of those because through those types of things, you'll be able to set yourself apart. You'll be able to, you know, ask you know the well thought out questions and and really get you know do your fact finding um, about all the different companies you can still do it without touching you know being face to face you'll be computer to computer but it's it's still it still does have an impact yeah and okay. julie say just you even coming to stuff like this like that does it is it's the same thing we're getting to see your face we're getting to know you i'm getting to see that you're engaged and are interested um, and what's going on and what's taking place. So that's really the first step. And when I kind of talk about the timeline later, I'll talk about making the time to come to these things that might not seem like a big deal. The recruiters do take note and they start to recognize seeing your face again and again leading up to those career fairs. Um, so yeah, just coming to these is still, that's what everybody's doing. So it's not like you're behind, you're the only one that's on right. the video. Right, so. oh, I have another question, tabling. Um, is there still going to be tabling for the fall at UMKC? Because I hadn't heard it before. Um, yes. So everything through our office will be virtual. Um, there are just, there are too many restrictions in terms of what kinds of events we can have on campus. And a lot, to be honest, a lot of firms and companies aren't allowing um, in-person recruiting either. And so it's not just UMKC that isn't allowing um, or that's restricting events. A lot of companies aren't allowing their employees to do any type of travel either, um, even if it is just, you know, just a couple miles away down the road. Um, so a lot of firm we have a lot of companies and firms are still doing what they were doing but just moving it to virtual so we have firms that are doing virtual office hours normally those would have been in person they're just doing it virtually and it's being they're signing up for them the same way that they did before um or students will sign up the same way they did before um 
they're still doing interviews that are scheduled through Handshake, but it will be, you know, there'll be virtual interviews. Um, we're doing our accounting career fair. It will be virtual. So every, pretty much everything that we've done in our office before, we're, we're still trying to make happen in a virtual way. And I know it's not ideal, but I think the one of the cool things that's come from this as um, as crazy as COVID has been is we, our students are actually, there are different companies and firms that are going to be recruiting at UMKC that haven't before because maybe their travel budget has restricted them before. So just keep that in mind also like this, we, I always try to point out the silver lining <laughs> with all of this. Yeah. And, um, and so, and that's one of them, um, is that you might be exposed to other organizations that you may not have been when everything was strictly in person as well. Yeah, I think and I, I definitely understand that. Yeah, and just to add to all of that, I think COVID certainly accelerated a lot of this move to a more virtual space, but I think in some ways we were heading in that direction to an extent, um, you'll notice as you move through this process that you will find firms that your first round of interviews will be totally recorded videos online. Um, and that we have companies all the time asking us to do things like virtual office hours. And so it feels like it all just got super accelerated and hit us all at once. But this is sort of the direction that um, this whole industry of, of campus recruiting has kind of been moving towards at least in some ways and into some pieces of of this application process so um i think it's it's good practice because i do think as you move further into your college career and then your professional career there will be a lot of things that you have to do in a virtual space and this is just sort of amping that up and getting you exposure to that early on okay thank you yeah. and um Roxanne and everybody, thank you. Yeah. So Maggie and I, um, or I'm going to talk a little bit about the different. Um, my slide will move. Um, uh, paths that you can take in accounting. So a lot of what we're talking about is public accounting um, because their timeline is more rigid. But I did want to talk also about. Um, government and corporate accounting as well. And if any of you have taken 306, Accounting 306 with Dave Donnelly, um, you probably have learned about the different paths. But um, anyway, so these are the three most common paths that students go into. Um, government, This you're getting your CPA, sitting for your CPA is either recommended or required, depending on what the role is. Um, well, we will always say that regardless of what um, what path you take, sitting for your CPA will always be beneficial. You'll never regret um, not sitting for your CPA, um, or you'll never regret sitting for your CPA. Um, so for examples, the FBI, the IRS, and the USDA all have great accounting paths. Um, their timeline, again, just isn't as rigid. Um, they might have internships, they might not. Um, and they do hire, they hire more of like of a just in time. So if you're a May graduate, you probably wouldn't see the job. You wouldn't. You probably wouldn't be able to apply for the position until that spring um, or that winter. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, as if, if government is more of, of what you're interested in, it's you don't have to start as early with that process. I will make one caveat. Um, I think that's definitely the case with the IRS and the USDA, the FBI has a little bit more of a specific timeline. So they do recruit the fall before. So if okay. you are interested in working full time as an accountant for the FBI, starting in May or June after you graduate, you will want to start looking for those positions the fall before. Great. Thank you. Um, corporate accounting. Um, so that is where you would be, you would work in accounting or finance for, you know, a company like Hallmark or Black & Veatch or Sprint. Um, the CPA isn't always required, but it will certainly help again. And um, some of them do have a good, um, like an internship to full time path. Um, so you'll just, it depends, it's so company based that you will need to look into um, what company you're interested in doing um, or you're interested in working for. Um, then there's public, which again, we're spending a good chunk of our time talking about public because 
The timeline is, is more rigid, um, but your CPA is required. Um, you have to have 150 hours to sit for the CPA. Um, at UMKC, this can be achieved by either doing a double major. So if you, we have students who study accounting and communications or accounting and IT, or um, they do a double within the block school accounting and finance. However you get your 150 hours, um, that's fine, um, but you can either do it through getting a, du your double, a double major or adding a minor if your minor gives you enough credits to do that, or also doing your BSA and MSA. So if you get your undergraduate accounting degree, your MSA usually should only take a year, and it's basically just doing a fifth year um, of coursework. So, um, and then doing, going the public route is also just the most, what we would say is the recommended way of doing it because you can, always, you can always start in public accounting and move to private. Um, it's very, very, very difficult and maybe even unheard of starting in corporate accounting or private and then moving to public. So just keep that in mind. Like if there is an inkling of you that is interested in public, try and start in public and then you can always move to private. And a lot of people do, um, they do the public thing for however many years, and then they move to private um, or corporate accounting or even government. Um, but it's incredibly difficult to, to, to switch it the other way, starting in private and then moving to public. Megan, and, do you have anything else you want to share about that? Yeah, and one of the reasons that it is more difficult to move from corporate accounting to public is the CPA requirement. So and Roxanne, you can probably speak to these requirements better than I can, but one of the requirements to, to sit for the CPA or to uh, eventually get the CPA is that you have to work under another CPA. And if you are in public, there are, everyone's a CPA. So you, there's no problem, you know, getting that requirement. But if you work in corporate accounting, your manager or someone you're working under might not have their CPA either. So you wouldn't meet that requirement and then it would make it nearly impossible then to switch over. That, and I think too, Maggie, yeah, and you're absolutely right, it's the CPA requirement. And also, you know, when you go to private industries, a lot of times they have their own systems and software. So the skills aren't necessarily transferable. Whereas in public accounting, for the most part, you're dealing with a lot of different industries, you're dealing with a lot of different uh, you know, systems, softwares, you know, multiple types of rules and regulations. So you get a very well-rounded experience in public accounting. And, and frankly, it, a lot of times our clients recruit our staff from us because they know how well qualified they are. But you know, that's the cost of doing business and we get that. And then we have clients that are also former employees. So mm -hmm. definitely uh, in, in public accounting, you, you just get a very broad understanding. And I think Aaron had said, you know, if you, you know, if you have an inkling of public accounting, you know, you should look into it. And that's what internships are for. You know, you, uh, you get in and you do an internship, you're not committed to the company, but you know, if you think about it, you can get a snapshot of what your career could look like in, in um, public accounting. So, you know, uh, the fact that, you know, everyone's here on this call and the, the school year is just launched and you're already getting started with this tells me that you're people that, you know, are, are doing your homework and, and um, you know, really trying to, to get a leg up. So, you know, that'll open up opportunities for you for sure. So, you know, I, I would even recommend trying a, a public and a private internship just to see those if depending upon your scheduling, uh, you know, a, a private in the summer and a public in the spring, um, you know, what other majors, you know, offer so many opportunities prior to a full-time job to get some experience and exposure. Yeah. And Roxanne, we see that, or, sorry, Maggie. I was just going to say, we see that all the time, Roxanne, mm -hmm. that our students, you know, do a public in the spring and then a private mm -hmm. in the summer, or they flip-flop them because because the CPA route puts you on more of a five-year timeline, maybe the summer between their junior and senior year, they do a private accounting internship. The following spring, when they're in that senior year, they do their public, mm -hmm. and then they would start 
full time the next year. So we see a lot of students who want to do internships earlier than maybe they're able to get into the public timelines. Right. Be able to do an earlier private internship. Exactly. Yeah. Any questions about these paths before we move on? All right, so let's talk a little bit about what the fall is going to look like. And I'm going to lean on Erin a little bit because she is the, um, the wonderful person behind getting all of these scheduled. But um, we've said it a few times, but even though everything will be virtual, we are still doing everything. Um, so the firms will still be doing virtual office hours. They will still be scheduling um, what would normally have been on-campus interviews, but they will still be um, scheduled through Handshake and you'll be able to use that platform to be really on top of looking at the firms and what they're posting in terms of their jobs and internships, scheduling your interviews, looking at who's coming to the career fair. I'll let Erin speak a little bit more about the career fair here in a minute because it is sort of a, a whole new world for all of us. Um, if you're not coming to the virtual webinar tomorrow that we're doing about how to navigate the virtual fairs, I'd recommend at least checking our YouTube channel next week and re-watching that video because we're gonna go step by step um, in terms of how you navigate the fair and how you sign up and how you then participate. Um, we also will have lots of workshops um, in this coming semester about resumes and interviewing, how to work the virtual career fair, sort of an introduction to career services overall. All of those workshops are posted in Handshake, so you can go in and RSVP for those so that you'll receive the Zoom link to attend. Um, and we're also going to be doing an exploring careers and accounting panel in October. So that'll be another great way to really kind of learn a little bit more about accounting. We always try to diversify. So on that panel, we will try to have someone from public, someone from private, and someone from government. Um, we also really try to get alums. So that's really nice because they can speak a little bit more to their perspectives coming out of UMKC and then going into these fields. So uh, again, that information is all going to be on Handshake. You, you probably hear a trend here, go to Handshake. Um, so make sure your profiles are completely filled out, that you have your resume uploaded. If you've not had your resume reviewed before, please make a resume appointment with one of our team um, or email it to me. I'll put my email address in the chat. I'm happy to just review it and send you feedback via email. Um, and that's all going to become very important, especially as you get ready to go to our fairs. Uh, in order for an employer to really see your profile and your resume, you're gonna to want to have those all in Handshake because Handshake is going to be the platform that hosts our virtual fairs this fall. Erin, um, do you wanna to speak to that a little bit about maybe verbally kind of walking them through how that's all gonna go? Yeah, so like Maggie mentioned here, and I'll stop sharing. I don't think we have any other yeah, slides. Um, as Maggie mentioned, our career fair is being hosted through Handshake, and um, it's really important for your profile to be as complete as possible um, because that is how um, employers will filter their candidates. So for example, if CBiz is only interested in talking to accounting students who are maybe juniors and older um, with a 3.5 GPA. Um, if your profile does not reflect that, even though that is that might be the case, you won't be you won't have the opportunity to sign up for a time to chat with CBIS. Um, so you want to make sure that everything is as complete and um, accurate as possible. Um, we all the information when you have a Handshake account created is imported from the registrar's office. So if you're a student who may have started out as a management student and then changed to accounting, that doesn't automatically update necessarily. So um, you want to make sure that you are updating that, but then it, we don't update your GPA. So if your GPA has fluctuated, it has gone up or down, whatever it might be, um, just make sure that is updated as well. It looks a lot like LinkedIn. If you haven't used Handshake a lot, it's very similar to LinkedIn. I think it's so user friendly as well. But um, when you log into Handshake, you'll want to register for our career fair, which is literally clicking a button. And I'm going to do a recording of how to do this. It will take about two minutes for you to do because it's so quick. You'll register for 
the career fair and then you'll go through and you'll see the companies attending. Um, currently, you're all, you can only see the companies who have paid and, and are approved. So there are more that have registered than what it is showing for, for you guys, but you'll see the companies that are attending and if they've developed their schedules or not. So a company might have like five representatives coming and they'll each have their own individual schedule. You can only meet with one, you can only meet with that company once. So um, you wouldn't be able to meet with, you know, CBiz and then KC, or sorry, Roxanne and then KC with CBiz. You'll only be able, you'll have to pick and choose, you know, who you want to chat with. And it's a 10 minute block as well. So you'll just sign up for that time and then it's added to your schedule and you're good to go. Then you can go down to the next company that you want to meet with. Um, and then during the fair, you'll just, you know, log back into Handshake, you'll go to the career fair um, and you will, when it's time for you to talk with CBIS, for example, you'll select that link and, um, and it will be like this. It's, um, it's all, it's like Zoom that you'll get a, you'll do a video chat with them. And then there's also a chat box feature as well. And the nice thing is, is that um, CBiz can see your Handshake profile as well, which should look like your resume. So that is how they can look at your resume while chatting with you, very similar to doing an in-person fair. Um, the time blocks are 10 minutes, which is incredibly long. Like if you've been to a career fair, I think you really only talked to um, someone for a max five minutes. Um, so some companies might might be limiting themselves to like three to five minutes when meeting with a student to give themselves a five minute break in between students. So just think about that also. Um, you, um, you'll definitely want to budget a 10 minute like time slot with each company, but some might be, uh, might be moving through you a little bit quickly and that's totally fine. Um, it's, just, it's just a way for them to manage their time in between talking to students. Um, but yeah, if you're able to attend the session tomorrow, we'll be deep diving into this a little bit more and um, it will be recorded as well. So you'll definitely be able to, to watch it if you're not able to attend. Was that clear as mud, Maggie? <laughs> yes. Um, I mean, I think the, the takeaway is that this is all new for all of us. Um, and so you know, it's new for the recruiters. It's because this platform hasn't existed um, before handshake has existed, but this career fair platform has not existed um, until now. And so uh, I would say be patient, um, but it seems at least up, you know, through now, like it's really easy to navigate, which was, you know, that's half the battle is just like getting in there, signing up, making sure that you, you know, what's going on, you know, your schedule. Um, and again, and just like a few overarching tips, like you're still going to want to wear professional dress, you know, you want to have a professional background, make sure you have a strong internet connection. Some of those things that, you know, you just check those off your list so that you feel more comfortable going into that day. But um, definitely come to a workshop, come chat with me, send me your resume. Um, we just want to make sure that, again, you're putting your best foot forward, especially if you are a transfer student or a little bit older going into your junior, senior year, like it's go time. So we just want to make sure um, that everything is is clear and easy and that you feel like you're on the right path. What questions do you guys have about any of this and then we can pass it off to Roxanne and Casey. Oh, you guys said you had a YouTube channel? Where, what's the, the YouTube channel called? Yeah, it's called the UMKC Career Channel. I'll link it in the chat. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and we have about 30 videos on there, everything from this is how you put a resume together to interview tips to salary negotiation. Erin will be uploading um, her video on how to get registered for the fair. Um, well, this will be uploaded. We pretty much put everything we do on there. So there's a lot of good content. Um, I guess I have a question. Um, I probably should have asked this earlier, but um, the, with the 150 hours that are required for the CBA, so exactly, um, I'm gonna probably go into more of a private opportunity instead of public is kind of what I'm looking for. Um, but I've, I've heard that the CPA, you should just get no matter which one you're gonna go into. Um, and at the end, technically, I wasn't aware of 150 hour requirement um, that at the end of my uh, classes, I need to take, I'll be at like 129. So I was just curious on like with maybe getting a minor or double majoring. I mean, 
I guess my question is, do I have to take specific classes um, that would only be for like a minor or um, for a double or can I like take just extracurricular or I guess those are, those are my questions. As long as you hit your core, I think it's 20 accounting curriculum hours. Um, you can really take anything. I will also link um, the Missouri and Kansas requirements for the CPA in the chat so that you have those. Um, Roxanne, any or Casey, any further details about that that could be helpful? I know for us, it doesn't matter to us if you're double majoring, getting your master's, what it is, we just need you to be CPA eligible. I can't recall off the top of my head exactly what the eligibility classes entail on the CPA side of things. Um, but most firms, they don't care how you get there. They want to see you CPA eligible. Um, Let's, do you remember, we were just having this conversation last week, Brent and I were looking up all of the different requirements. Um, I would also say, just talk to your faculty. Most of our faculty um, practiced. Um, Lee Salzeter, who is our department chair, he worked for um, an accounting firm before getting his PhD. And he also used to sit, or maybe he still is, on the Missouri Society of CPAs, I believe. And so he, um, but all of them would know, all of them, you know, would know specifically like what classes you need and how many accounting specific classes you need to sit for the CPA. So um, I think we have some, I think our, fac our accounting faculty are awesome to work for or work with and they, um, they truly want to make sure you guys are being successful. And so just shoot, if you had a good relationship with one of them last year, or if you're a transfer student and you don't know, we're happy to connect you as well. But um, any of them would be able to tell you, you know, what specifically you would need um, to still be eligible for the CPA. Yeah, it's a quick uh, Google search as well. If you go to the Becker website, that's what I just pulled up. Um, and you can pick the state that you want to get your CPA license in. Um, yeah. yeah, it says 150 semester hours with a concentration or major in accounting, including, and then it breaks down um, the type of hours you need. So okay. yeah, I, I have that exact same thing pulled up. And I just, I don't see a chat box for some reason. And so we can email, I'll email you all of these resources that we have mentioned today, including like the YouTube channel link, um, Becker's requirements. Yeah, all that good stuff. Okay, and then with the internship um, ordeal, whenever I'm obviously in college, um, is there a specific kind of internship? I, I know you said probably doing public first, but um, are those, so should I basically go into public first for interning or private or does it really matter? So, so when, when we were talking about like what to do first versus the other, mm -hmm. it kind of depends on, on where you fall. So we do have a lot of students who might do, like Maggie said, might do a summer um, like corporate internship because they're not eligible to do a public accounting internship. And so they'll do that the following spring. Um, but if, if you're dead set on, you know, wanting to do private accounting, then doing like loading up on private experience, which is great. That's a great thing about being at UMKC is that you could probably do multiple internships, like one in the summer and then one throughout the school year as well. Um, I would say loading up on, on those opportunities would be, would be good. I don't, I mean, either way, it will be good. I mean, having both experiences, I think, would honestly be best. So you can at least compare the two. And a corporate or um, a public accounting internship won't look bad when you're looking for, if, if you do decide to go into corporate or yeah, private accounting. Um, but I mean, there's opportunity. It doesn't, I think it, in terms of public accounting, it just kind of depends on where you fall um, and, and what their timeline is, if that makes sense. Yeah, okay. thank you. Yeah. And I think a lot of the, I think a lot of, you know, when we were having that conversation about recommending the private in the summer is based on, was really based on typical availability uh, yeah. for and options for internships, you know, it, you know, yeah, by all means, if you know you want to go 
private, you know, cut just zero in on, on those core companies that you're interested in, trying to find information out about them. And, and yeah, I would, I'd recommend doing multiple, you know, internships with different companies so you can kind of get a feel for what that looks like. Uh, so there's no hard and fast rule. It's just, it was basically a recommendation based on availability, typical availability and um, getting the best possible experience from, from both. Yeah. Any other questions before we hand it over to Casey and Roxanne? Okay, well, I'm going to let you guys take it away and talk a little bit about CBiz and introduce yourselves a little bit more. Well, I'll introduce myself first a little bit more because Casey's going to drive this part of the of the conversation. Uh, I'm Roxanne Sabatino. I am the recruiting senior manager with CBiz. So we're located on the plaza. If you haven't seen our offices, uh, we're at 47th and Jefferson. I've been with CBiz for almost 17 years now and uh, have been involved in, in the campus recruiting process. So, you know, as you're kind of looking, you know, going through your search and anything, if you have any questions, you know, there isn't a question I probably haven't heard or been asked, so I'd be happy to assist with any questions, even if it's not related to CBiz. Uh, you know, our, our goal, our primary goal is to get you where you fit best. And we hope it's with CBiz, but you know, that may not be, and that's okay. Uh, you know, because ultimately we want you to land where you want to be. So I will turn the rest over to Casey because she's gonna drive the, the rest of the conversation this afternoon. All right, can everybody hear me okay? Is this volume good? <laughs> Um, okay, so my name is Casey Haverkamp. Um, I've been at CBiz since 2015. I actually graduated from UMKC, so nice to be back on campus or, you know, virtually back on campus. Um, my major was actually a business administration with a marketing emphasis, so I don't have a public accounting or accounting background. Took a couple of accounting classes, um, but I actually got in doing an internship that was recruiting with Roxanne and then some HR generalist type work. Um, as well as administrative functions and kind of move towards um, doing more of this recruiting and the HR generalist work. So um, I am going to kind of talk about the timeline, kind of CBiz specific and then a little bit general timeline and what you might be looking at. And then from there I'll kind of talk more about our company specifically and questions that you might have for us about CBiz. So uh, CBiz begins talking to students as early as their freshman year. I know you guys are transfer students. That does not mean you are behind. We talk to plenty of students who have come either from another university, they're transferring or they've changed majors um, or for whatever reason, we are just talking to them in line with them kind of starting to look for an internship for either the upcoming spring semester or a year out. So. Um, what I would kind of say is as far as the timeline goes with this fall, if you guys are all transfer students, the fall is the time to start talking to the, uh, to the companies and start getting your face in front of these companies. Um, you don't want the first time you're meeting people to be at the career fair if they've physically been on campus beforehand, or not physically, you know, virtually this time. Um, so the um, companies are gonna come they're gonna come with information tables. They're gonna be available for resume reviews. They're gonna be available for mock interviews. There's gonna be all sorts of different reasons that um, you might be able to get to talk to the different companies. I would say every time you see something come out, give the company a quick search, learn a little bit about them, see if it's somewhere you might be interested in. And if you might be interested, go ahead and sign up. Um, getting your face in front of the companies is just the biggest step to start building those relationships. And it really does a lot of times come down to relationships, which you'll hear again and again in your classes as they talk to you about uh, making relationships and starting to kind of move in that direction. Um, I always say too, you know, maintain those relationships throughout your college career, even if you decide um, shortly after meeting a company that that's not the company that you ideally want to land at because you don't know down the road once you're a few years into your career, things could change and having those relationships like this is the best time for you guys because um, you're able to meet so many different companies all at once. So 
Um, come to the information tables, come to the resume reviews, really start putting yourself out there as someone who's interested, they're determined, they're, you know, passionate about finding where they want to end up. Um, so after all of those various early semester events, as we try to do those, we try to get on campus ahead of the actual career fair. Um, you want to be sure you actually then attend the career fair. So go to the career fair. Um, talk to the companies again that you have interest in. Feel free to, you know, talk to some other companies as well. Uh, we've kind of said for the physical career fairs in the past, if there's like a company you're kind of interested in, go to that table first as the practice before you uh, figure out what you're going to say and go to the, the other companies. <laughs> Don't tell them they're the practice company though. Um, so they're already going to have um, positions posted ahead of the career fair or kind of in line with the career fair. And you want to make sure that you're either applying for those positions um, through your career center. What is it? Handshake, right? Is where everything's at for UMKC. You want to make sure you're applying for those kind of right in line with going to the career fair or very shortly after because the turnaround time for at least for CBiz um, is like the next week or two that we're generally doing those interviews. Uh, so it's very fast between meeting somebody on campus uh, at the info tables, the resume reviews, leading straight into the career fair. And then from there, we're making quick decisions on who we're going to interview. Um, and that's where if you've had the opportunity to meet them a few times ahead of the career fair, that's going to really set you apart as opposed to someone who we just met at the career fair and are having to make a decision based off of a quick five minute conversation versus maybe have met, met them a few other times leading up to that. Um, so anyway, you go to the career fair. Then we've got interviews very soon after that. Most companies are the same, very soon after that. Um, if you are looking for a spring opportunity, you're probably gonna hear back from companies pretty quick. Um, typically for us, when we're on campus in the fall, we might have just a handful of spring opportunities for the very upcoming spring. Um, otherwise, we're actually looking at the following uh, spring or the most upcoming summer. So, um, definitely get in front of people ASAP if you're looking for the most upcoming spring. This year, we actually are full on our most upcoming spring, at least right now, unless things change and we suddenly have um, more need. We're full for spring 2021. We will be looking in the fall at spring 2022. And that's how far out we're making some of those offers. And, and that's not just CBIS, that's um, most public accounting firms are on pretty much that exact same timeline at looking over a year out. Um, so if you are looking at the most upcoming spring, like I said, you're going to hear back very soon. For CBIS, and I'm sure for most other firms, they're going to be comparing, you know, students or they're going to be looking at students from not only UMKC, but they're at KU, K-State, Mizzou, Arkansas, uh, UCM. You're in a large, large pool, and they're going to finish their interviews at all those schools before they make those final decisions for those couple of spots. So um, I would say, though, for upcoming spring, probably wouldn't be more than a month after the career fair that you'd hear back. Um, if, however, you're looking at not that upcoming spring, so not for us spring 2021, but spring 2022, it might be a little bit further out before you hear back, just because we're finishing nailing down things for the upcoming spring. Um, if you're looking further out, it might be you know, a month or two later that we're going to give you next steps. So if you were looking at spring 2021, say for this fall, um, hopefully you get an offer in hand. Um, if you're looking at a future spring, you might get an offer. You might get next steps that consist of some kind of additional interview steps where maybe we want to get you in front of some partners um, to do more one-on-one -on -one interviews. Um, we might say, hey, we're going to speak with you in the spring when we're back on campus or back virtually on campus about coming to a summer opportunity to see the office, like our summer leadership fairs. Um, so you'll kind of get those next steps. One thing I would say is if you do get an offer in the fall and it's for not this most upcoming spring, spring 2021, but if you're getting an offer for spring 2022 or spring of 2023, those far out offers, pay attention to your offer because um, it's gonna have an offer deadline on it and it's okay to use the time frame that you're given. Most companies, I don't think UMKC doesn't have rules, right, on how long to keep these open? Aaron? We don't. That's something that we um, 
are in the process. And I, I mean, honestly, it needs to get finalized because we've noticed that it's become a little bit more of a problem in the past year. So, um, and it will be in a lot, it will be in alignment with what Mizzou does um, for their offer timelines. So, which is, remind me, the last like day of oh. July or something. Yep, last yeah. day in July. Yeah. yeah, and a lot of companies um, for offers that far out um, are going to give you some time. They're not going to say like, you know, we need a decision tomorrow. Um, that looks pretty rigid and, you know, doesn't look like they're giving you the opportunity to explore your options. Most companies are going to give you at least some time to decide for those offers that are quite a ways out. So I always say, pay attention to those deadlines, you know, mark it in your calendar, um, but it's okay to tell the recruiter, Hey, I am so excited about this opportunity. Thank you so much. I'm absolutely thrilled. Um, and I will get back to you as soon as possible with an answer because they're going to typically, you know, offer over the phone and then they'll send you that letter. Um, so anyway, pay attention to the letter because like Roxanne was kind of talking about, it's really in your best interest to find a firm that's a good fit for you. You know, learn about the culture. If you want to, if you want to try to do some kind of tour of the office or something, not sure how possible that's going to be this year. Um, I would think, you know, you could maybe work out some kind of one-on-one -on -one masks on social distancing thing. Um, but anyway, think about, you know, what's important to you, the people, the place, the culture, um, the type of clients, the type of work, what you're going to be able to do at an entry level, whatever's important to you, think about those things and really dig in deep and figure out, um, you know, what the companies have to offer because chances are you might end up with a few offers and so really trying to figure out what's gonna make the most sense for you and where you're gonna be happiest. I mean, it's your career. You're gonna be spending a lot of time with these people at these places. Um, so try to figure out what makes sense and then make a really informed decision. You know, we as recruiters, we're not under any illusion that you're only talking to us. Um, it's not like we're exclusively dating here. We know you're talking to other recruiters. Um, so that's fine, say, I will get back to you. And um, if you do have a really tight turnaround, you know, they want an answer next week. Um, and you've got an interview two weeks out at a different firm that you're really interested in. It's okay to let the firm that you've got that upcoming interview with, let them know, hey, I've got this other offer that's got a deadline prior to our interview. Is there anything we can do to speak sooner? Because uh, most of the time, we can probably work pretty fast to go ahead and get that interview accomplished. Um, you know, if they've invited you for an interview, they're already interested in you. They want to talk to you. So rather than get super excited and accept on the spot at one when you're not entirely sure, you know, think it through, have that conversation with those recruiters um, and see if there's anything that you can do. Because you could end up with two offers in hand and then, and then you're really, you know, in charge of your own decision. You're in charge of your career path from that early time, which is just a really nice place for you guys to be able to be in as accounting students. Um, you know, that's not something that a lot of other majors, I don't think, have. Um, and accounting students, a lot of times, you've got multiple offers, and that's a good place to be. So really try to figure out where you, where it means the most to end up. So, um, so anyways, that was the end of the fall semester. You either got an offer or you're hearing about next steps from the different firms that you've been in contact with. Um, so then you move into spring. Maybe you're doing an internship if you were looking into and got an offer for that upcoming spring. At least for our firm, uh, we really need students to pretty much take the semester off um, from classes because we treat our internships like full-time positions. So that means minimum 55 chargeable hour work weeks. Um, it could be more than that between some non-charge meetings and things like that. Chargeable um, meaning work you're doing on the client for the client that we can build back to the client. Um, so we've occasionally had, you know, a student that's able to do, say, one online class, but we really recommend against it. Just put everything you've got into this internship, work really hard, learn as much as you can, make as many connections as you can um, with the various partners, and then hopefully you're earning yourself that future full-time offer. Um, spring for students who are looking further out, that's going to look like more of trying to get your face in front of these companies that you met in the fall, more contact, more, hey, can we meet? I've got some questions, um, more, what's the next steps on your end? What do I need to be doing on my end? When can I expect to hear from you? You know, follow up and figure out when they're going to be doing more info tables, more of whatever they're doing. 
In the spring, CBIS for recruiting purposes, we're looking at um, coming on campus and virtually um, and talking to students about our summer leadership program. Most large accounting firms have something similar um, to a summer leadership program. Ours is a two day event and it's going to be an opportunity for you to meet us, us to meet you, ideally for you to see our office space and to see, um, you know, more people than you would see just from a recruiting event. I mean, we have a lot of people involved in our summer leadership program and the whole, a big point of it is a cultural fit. Do you guys like what we have to offer? Does it match what you're looking for? Um, and, you know, back and forth. So, so our spring is really devoted to recruiting for that, interviewing for that, making offers for that summer leadership program. And then the summer leadership program naturally happens in the summer. For us, it's a two day event, normally the last Thursday and Friday in June. And a lot of our full time, or sorry, a lot of our internship offers are gonna come straight out of that summer leadership program for the next spring. And that's where, when we come around again to next fall, that's why most of our spring um, internship positions are already gonna be full and we might only be looking for just a very small handful to fill a few final spots. But for the most part, um, coming out of spring recruiting, summer leadership program offers um, for that upcoming spring, that's why when you guys are talking to companies, they're gonna be full in the fall for the most immediate spring, and they're looking at that year out time frame. Um, so, and then as far as timeline related to offers, once you guys are able to do that internship, Hopefully you're earning yourself a future full-time offer. Um, we actually, and this is how the other companies do it as well, we're able to project that far out for our needs. And so we offer as far out as, you know, needed for you to complete your school so that you can be CPA eligible um, prior to starting with us full-time. That's one of our requirements to start full-time with us. It's not that you already have your CPA, it's that you're CPA eligible. So you've gotten the master's or the dual major or completed those extra college credits in some way, shape, or form um, that you can sit for the CPA. We recommend a lot of students, you know, if you're able to, go ahead and knock out all the tests before you start, because um, it is hard to do it once you've already started. It's not, you know, impossible. We have plenty, 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 tons of people who start with us and are trying to get it in that first year, um, because we do have a bonus structure for getting it in the first 12 months of being employed, getting the CPA versus months like 13 to 24 is a different amount and 24 onward is a different amount. Um, so we really want you to get it, you know, as soon as possible. Um, but to start full time, you just need to be CPA eligible. And like Shelby, I think, it, Shelby, you're coming back um, not until what, 2022 full time? Yeah, my offer, I get done with my master's in December 2021 and then my full time offer starts in 2020, January 2022. So yeah. they do offer it very far out. Mm -hmm. It's whatever is needed based on your schooling. So by the same token, you know, we have people who um, finished their whole master's program, they're already CPA eligible. Really for us, um, the best way into the company is going to be through an internship. Um, we've got a very successful internship program that the internships lead to those future full-time offers. So we don't tend to have additional full-time entry level straight out of college positions open. Um, so, but we have had people who go ahead and do an internship with us after having maybe graduated um, in December with their 150 hours, their CPA eligible, they'll do an internship anyway, even though they're totally done with school. Um, and then for them, most of the time we're able to go ahead and work with them on starting as soon as they would reasonably like. Um, sometimes they want to take off, you know, the rest of that semester in summer to get their to get their CPA and knock it all out, and then they start in the very next fall with us. Um, but yes, we are open and flexible on when that full time position is. You know, you've come in, you've done your internship, you've met people, you've proven you're a hard worker, you're a positive person. People want to see you back. Um, so the the offer we're able to work around the schooling and what you need to complete. So kind of rush through a lot there, the timeline. Um, questions on the timeline? I had a question about the summer leadership program. Yeah. 
Um, is that something that would be posted on Handshake that we would be notified about, or, or is there some other notification process? Yep, so the Summer Leadership Program, the way at least CBIS has done it in the past is marked students who are interested while we're meeting them in the fall. And then a lot of times we're posting it in the spring and that's when you'd actually apply for it. Um, so it might not be, for us, it's not going to be on Handshake in the fall. We'll talk to students about it in the fall, um, but we'll post on Handshake in the spring and interview for that in the spring. Okay, thank you. And just, yeah, and to kind of, in addition to what CBIS does, um, some firms, if they really liked a student they met in the fall, they'll extend them an invitation to their summer leadership that mm -hmm. fall. That's not uh, an internship offer. Um, so, and we recommend that students do as many summer leaderships as their um, schedule allows. So you can kind of, you know, see where you best fit. Um, I will say that the big four, so if you guys aren't familiar with who the, it's um, APMG, EY, PWC, and Deloitte, um, they've moved away from like a summer leadership. And so when their position is posted or when it's posted in the spring, they're po they have their, so for this coming spring, they'll have their 2022 <laughs> internships posted. <laughs> so you would apply for those. And um, if you get an offer, then they do like a summer celebration type thing. But again, you are not committed to accepting that internship offer until at the end of the summer and usually all of their dates are you know aligned that way um, so you might get an internship offer from one of them we still recommend that you would do c business summer leadership and bkd and you know mark's not you know whoever it is that you're getting offers from um, and then at the end of the summer you evaluate the offers that you got and you you know determine what um, firm you think would be best um, for you. So we're seeing a little bit of a shift with how summer leadership is done, but the majority of firms are still doing like a true summer leadership. One, it, some, some, it, they are just one day, some are two days. Um, they're a lot of fun. Like the students that do it like have such a blast because they're able to meet other students from other campuses or be able to enter, they're able to interact with partners and managers and directors and they can I don't know, just really get a good vibe for the culture of the firm. So if you, if your schedule allows, it's really the best way to get your foot in the door with the firms. The other thing that I was gonna say is we keep referring to them as summer leadership programs, but that's not necessarily what they're called, like in Handshake. <laughs> Every firm has a different name for their summer leadership program. So as you're on Handshake, if you're just searching summer leadership nothing will probably pop up. So what you should really get in the habit of doing is having your core list of firms and search by the firm name. Because if you type in CBiz, all of their internships, their summer leadership program, everything will populate under their company name versus just trying to type in like internship or summer leadership. So I would have sort of a list going all the time of the firms that you're interested in, who you've spoken with um, and search for them that way on Handshake because like, what is CBIS, what is what is yours called? It's called Career, Career Academy. <laughs> Career Academy, that's right. And some are, you know, called Embark and you know, they all have different um, names for all your different, some have even different names for internship programs. So again, it's always best to um, search on Handshake by the company name versus like what you think the program might be called. Yeah. Yeah. And I would say too, um, interestingly enough, you know, we've had people who uh, attended our program and accepted offers elsewhere and then like two, three years down the road, reach back out to, to me because of their experience. They had, they were left with a positive feeling about the company and, and wound up coming to work for us. So, you know, you, you never want to burn any bridges. You always, you know, if you have the opportunity, it's worth, it's worth the, the investment of your time to, to figure out where you best fit in the future. So, uh, you know, and um, we in this, in the whole COVID environment this year, we actually had our Career Academy live. It was uh, very socially distanced, uh, you know, uh, but 
all, we're all masked up and hand sanitized and, and broken down in smaller groups and, and set six feet apart. But we felt so strongly about the experience for you students that we, we did we did take a risk, but we are past two weeks of the program and everyone's good. So, so that's a good thing. But you know, we, we want it to, to allow everybody to have that experience because it is, it's really valuable. And I do, I, I echo what everyone else says. I encourage you, you know, to attend multiple programs because that is where you're truly going to get the sense of what a company is like and, and where that fit is for you. And uh, I wanted to I wanted to touch on something else that that Casey said when she was talking about um, you know if um, before going to the Greer Fair you might want to go and look at you know look um, at the opportunities and maybe apply. It's a great beginning talking point for you. You you, you know you you go into the room and say hey I you know I saw you had had the internship position for twenty two posted, I went ahead and applied for that. And then I noticed and then have a question about the company. Uh, and, and just by simply doing that, that's going to set you apart from the next person that comes up to us. So this group that's attending this today, that, that, that's your tip. That's, that's your tip to set yourself apart from everybody else that's going to be interviewing for positions. Because that says to a potential employer, that you're interested and you're engaged, and and um, then it, in turn makes you memorable. So I think you know that that's that's a really good way and a good place for you to start. Uh, and I think someone else had mentioned you may have you know two two other offers. As an accounting major, you will have multiple offers. That's just a fact, and you're, and you're going to have to make some tough decisions. So. Uh, the more you can do that, your homework on the front end, the better off you'll be. I think the other thing to note that is completely unique to accounting students is that if you get invited to a summer leadership program, you very well may be set your entire, entire rest of your college career. Um, the fact that you could go to a summer leadership, get the internship offer from the summer leadership, get the full-time offer from the internship, I mean, the fact that as, you know, a sophomore or junior, you know, you could just literally have your whole career set um, as you go through. I mean, you still have to work hard and you have to prove yourself, but I mean, it's, it's a very unique thing um, for accounting specifically. And so definitely take advantage of getting in early and doing those programs over the summer because they can just, I mean, rocket ship your career forward, which is very cool. And um, as far as you know, future full-time positions for CBIZ, we ideally, we're setting ourselves up that should the students earn that future full-time position, they will get offered that future full-time position. Um, so in other words, we're not offering a ton of internships because we need a lot of busy season, but really we've only got three uh, students worth of future need. Um, so for reference, we had 17 interns this past busy season. Um, they did a phenomenal job. It was an amazing class of interns um, and all 17 actually did receive future full-time offers. Um, you know, in years past, we've had 16 out of 17 or 15 out of 17. Point being, you know, we're not having 30 interns to offer three positions. Um, so the internship is really, you know, a good opportunity for you to go ahead and Prove yourself, work really hard, ask for additional guidance, ask for additional work when you finish. Um, it was actually a, a professor at UMKC that told me that early in his career, he tried to kind of hide behind things. And when he got done with stuff, he'd try to lay low a little bit, you know, take off early. And he said that once he changed his mindset to thinking like, hey, I think these people are actually going to notice if I work a little harder. Um, and he said he'd start asking for more projects when he was done with something. He'd start letting people know when he got done early instead of waiting till the thing was due to turn it in. Um, and he said he got, you know, he got noticed. People notice that and that's what we love to see in our interns that right out of the gate um, hard work ethic that you can't train into somebody. We can teach you to use all of our softwares. Um, we can teach you our methodology. We can't teach you to be a really hard worker um, and a, you know, a helpful Coworker, a nice coworker, positive attitude. So, 
Casey, I think that's such an important um, statement you made about your conversion of your interns to full time, because something that you're going to run into as you are working with firms, some firms have close to 100% conversion rate. Like if you get in there and you prove yourself and you do a great job, you know, there should be a full time position waiting for you. But there are firms that, to your point, Casey, do way over higher interns too, and then they're not able to offer full time positions. So as you're getting to know the firms, like be willing to ask questions about conversion rates and and to and you know to really dig in um, because if you have an offer from two firms and you find out one has a really high conversion rate and one has a really low conversion rate that might help you make a decision between one firm or the other. Um, and so I think it's really important to, to ask, you know, especially to Roxanne's point too, but you will have multiple offers. Like you need to dig in and you need to ask the important questions and to get to know these firms and going to their summer leadership programs is a great way to start those conversations. Um, but yeah, you need to do a lot of good research and really know, um, and, you know, in every interview you'll do, the firm will ask you why you're interested in working for their company. And it'd be really easy if it's like a big four, just to be like, oh, you're a big four. That's not a good enough answer. You need to really know that firm and know why you want to work there outside of it just being a big four. Um, so again, getting to know the recruiters, getting to know the company's values, looking at their mission statement, looking at who their clients are, where they operate. Um, asking the important questions. This is how you really get to know the firm, get to know the people who work there, um, and then make the right decision ultimately. I think Maggie, you had a good point about, um, about like locations also. Like if you have, a lot of our students stay in Kansas City and we're lucky that we have such a large um, accounting firm presence in Kansas City and, um, and so that's not a problem. But if there's a part of you, you know, who wants to move to Chicago or to Florida or New York, um, make sure that the firms that you're talking to have offices there as well. So you'll have, <laughs> you'll have, you'll have a so maybe you want to stay in Kansas City, but then you know eventually you would like to you know move away. Um, so we have a lot of firms that that come to our fair who are local which is great but uh, we have a lot of firms that come that um are you know national or international firms as well so if you um, have an interest of moving away um keep that in mind so all of these things like if there are industries that you're passionate about if you're passionate about healthcare and there's a firm that specifically works more with healthcare organizations you know look at them a little bit more and so those are just things to think about, like Maggie said, that um, as you're kind of making your decision on, on where you want to end up. So, I think there's a lot more nuance to all of the firms than you know people think. They, you know, right. it's not just you're going to be an audit accountant and you're just going to do audit, and that's you know, like there's mm -hmm. there's different types of clients that you'll be working with. Um, there's different locations like that your clients will be located like some firms are more regional so it's more you're driving to your clients but some firms like you're going to flying to California on a weekly basis until you wrap up that piece of work with that client so I mean it's yeah it's really important to know the scope of the firm um, and, and many other things as you're trying to make your decisions. Yeah. And kind of again to Maggie's point, so as an example for CBiz, our offices across the country look very different. So you want to talk to the recruiters early on about where you're interested in going, because at least for CBiz, ideally we're having students intern where they would like to end up full time, um, just from, you know, our focus on what are you looking for, what's going to make you happy in your career, what's going to make you kind of stick around. If you come an intern at our Kansas City office and you love our culture and you love our environment and our Kansas City office is um, our largest office with about 500 people in the building. Um, and then you end up saying, well, hey, my family is back in so and so place and I want to transfer to your office I saw you have out there. Sure, maybe we can make that happen, but maybe that's an office that has 20 people and doesn't quite have the same feeling as you enjoyed so much in Kansas City. So we would ideally have you intern where you want to land so that you can get a feel for that office, figure out if it's a place you want to be. Um, so just kind of same thing. Same with, um, you know, uh, Shelby mentioned that you've got the opportunity to work on tax and audit. That's something that um, we've been doing for years and years and years, having that dual internship where you can work on both of those. Um, some of our offices might have, you know, a smaller number of interns and maybe they're not able to schedule it 
as close to a nice mix as we are. Um, so again, feel, figuring out what you're looking for, the location, what you're looking for as far as the work to be done, the size of clients. Um, ask all that because, you know, it's not going to scare us away. We're going to be able to talk with you about what the opportunities are. And our national team, uh, our national recruiting team is actually in Kansas City. So I know those folks really well. And uh, we've had a lot of success with getting students to other offices if that's where they want to be. Uh, you, you just want to, when you approach that topic, you, you know, I think Maggie may have mentioned it or, or Aaron, you want to make sure you have a, a good reason why you want to go to that other city. You know, uh, you know, not, I want to go to New York because it sounds cool. You know, I want to go to New York because I'm in, interested in the financial, the financial market. And I know that, you know, a lot of the firms work on those types of clients in New York, or I'm from there. I have family there. I'd like to get back home, you know, because, uh, you know, they, if, if we're going to go to bat for you and put you in front of some of the other offices, we want to make sure that, that, you know, you truly want to be there and have a, a, a passion or legitimate reason for wanting to be there. And um, I think if Casey was talking about our numbers and then Maggie was talking about our numbers, uh, being surrounded by accountants, I keep statistics on everything. So uh, to give you some statistics, we have a 85% offer rate on our interns. And this has been, I've been keeping statistics as long as I've been there. So 85% of that 85%, 75% accept future full-time offers. And then um, currently our professional workforce, which I deem as everyone CPA eligible, 65% of our workforce came from campus recruiting. So, the message, the message um, you know, I, I want you to understand from that is not only do people come and have successful internships that they choose to accept, but they stay and they grow up in the company. And that's, you know, I, in, in our environment, we put a premium on retention. So we do a lot of different things from career progression to compensation to making your life as, as pleasant as possible while you're while you're working and and you know managing the hours and all that because we want you to stay long term uh, that's not the case everywhere again another thing to to ask about and to be curious about and then that, that may not be what you want and that's okay if you you know if you know if you know hey i'm just looking to get in public accounting for a couple of years to build my you know to build up my resume and move on that's okay and i would say to you you know, maybe we're not the right place for you then because we want people, we want to invest in people uh, and we, you know, we want to help them career path, find their passion, grow up and someday be a partner in our firm. I mean, that's really what we're looking for out of our, out of our campus recruits. So that I'm looking at them going, is this someone I see as a future partner? Is this someone I see running our tax department, uh, running our training program? Uh, being our technical expert, all those types of things at the college level, we're looking for those types of people to join us. So we thought at the end of this, it would be fun to kind of split Casey and Roxanne into different breakout rooms and have, um, have you guys um, talk with them at, in a smaller setting and a smaller group. And so this is kind of your chance to pick their brains a little bit more about, um, or sorry, Casey, were you done? I should have asked. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, just, <laughs> I feel like we got into like such a like a discussion mode that <laughs> because I wanted to make sure. Anyway. It all um, nice okay. job too, Casey. <laughs> yes, thank you. You did a great job. It was very thorough. Um, but this is your chance to kind of pick their brain about like anything specific, like about CBIZ or um, about like if you know when you're CPA eligible, if that falls, like they'll be able to tell you like, you know, this is when you would be able to intern with them, um, you know, like things that are more specific to you. And um, if you, like Maggie said, if you aren't sure about your CPA eligibility date, she's able to help you know, kind of walk you through that and, um, and backtrack that for you. And if you also want um, Maggie to look at your resume, 
um, we can do that as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and move you guys into your breakout rooms. Um, I'll still hang out in this main meeting room while you guys are chatting. Um, students, when you're done, um, like if you've had all your answers questions uh, or all your questions answered, feel free um, to leave. But, um, but yeah, I hope that sounds good for everyone. I thought this was the best way to do it in a virtual space, so. Um, so once you get the invitation to move over, um, feel free to do so, to accept it.